what is up everybody what's going on katie how are you good afternoon everyone uh we are excited katie is so awesome she got us this divorce document the full well possibly the full document because they said like 800 pages but this is like 566 so there may be some redacted stuff right that they didn't release or or stuff that's sealed stuff that's sealed right so but it's a lot folks it's it's a lot and uh we're gonna go through this. Uh, I have had Katie on before, uh, but Katie, if you want, just give a little in, give a little bio for the folks who have who haven't seen you before. Just let them know um, about yourself. So I'm from Broward. That's uh, the the place where uh, Broward County, Florida, which is where uh, Charlie was arrested from. Coral Springs is uh, my old stomping grounds. That's where they grew up. I grew up in uh, Lauderdale by the sea. Uh, but I mean, different city, same county. It's a very large metro area down there. Um, I did nine, eight and a half, nine years as an assistant state attorney in Broward, did sex crimes down there, which is Fort Lauderdale. And uh, then I moved up here, did three years of sex crimes in the state attorney's office up here. And now I'm at, I've been in private practice for three years now. So yeah, Katie uh, was so kind to get us this, this document. We're going to go through it. Uh, we're going to do like an hour, but we're probably not going to get to it. Well, no, we're definitely not going to be able to get through the whole thing. So we're going to hopefully do this as like a weekly thing whenever, you know, we can both do this. Uh, you know, Katie has as a young uh, child, you just tell me two dogs, two cats. So when scheduling and, and working, obviously, so when scheduling is available, we're going to try to bring you each you know week or a couple of weeks. We'd go through this thing because uh, obviously, you know, this case, where did this start? Right. Uh, Katie, this started with this with this divorce and there was a lot going in and you can learn a lot about Dan, right. From like going through these documents, just reading his, his words. Yeah. It's uh, some of these, I had said this previously after having read some of these documents, I, it made me really sad that I never got to meet him because it sounds like something I would have written. Like I could picture him mashing away on his keyboard, pissed off and, you know, going at it and just being like, I want her to burn. <laughs> it's like you know i think you have to be a lawyer to get it but it's it's like i was reading through it and i'm like i'm really sad i never met him so yeah so um what, how we're gonna do this is i'm gonna read through the documents um and then Kay's gonna stop me if there's anything she wants to point out or at the end of the document we'll kind of go over uh what we have here so uh let's let's begin here let's pull up the document here this is the initial petition for dissolution of marriage filed by wendy as you can see if you i don't know hopefully you guys can see this right i can make it a little uh bigger here let's see uh it is filed stamped september 10th 2012 uh petitioner wendy adelson here and referred to as wife states one action for dissolution this is an actual action for the dissolution of marriage uh, two residents, wife has been a resident of Florida for more than six months prior to filing this petition. Three, marriage. The parties were married to each other February 26, 2006. Four, irretrievably broken. The marriage between the parties is irretrievably broken. Uh, five, that there are children. These are two children born on the marriage filed simultaneously. Here is the petitioner slash wife's uniform child custody jurisdiction an Enforcement Act affidavit. Uh, pr six, present custody. The best interest of the minor children will be served by determining shared parental responsibility. Uh, seven, parenting plan. The best interest of the minor children will be served by the court establishing a parenting plan that provides wife with the majority of time sharing. Interesting. So she wants the majority of time sharing. Uh, and I'll stop you there and say there's a presumption for 50-50, so long as there's not anything weird going on in anybody's lives. Um, but there's also something called the tender years doctrine, which is basically the younger the child, maybe more time with mom. But in, in recent years, my understanding, um, and I'm going back to family law and law school, is that the only reason to do that when the child is very young is if they're still breastfeeding. And and that that's a really good reason to leave them with mom the majority of time just because of practicalities. That's super interesting. So basically, if they're not that young, the the presumption is fifty fifty is is what the court would would want is fifty essentially fifty fifty. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Okay. Um, all right. Eight child support. The children are presently in need of temporary and permanent support from the husband. 
nine alimony wife needs is entitled to temporary bridge the gap lump sum and durational alimony and husband is well able to provide for the wife consistent with the lifestyle established during the marriage so we're asking for some alimony here uh 10 real and personal property the parties uh own both real property tangible and intangible personal property and liabilities which require the court's determination of marital assets valuation and equitable division uh actual distribution of assets and liabilities. The parties have obtained certain assets and have incurred certain debts and liabilities during the course of the marriage which assets and debts should be equitably distributed between the parties in accordance with the provision of 61.075 Florida statute. Uh, 12 non marital assets. There are non marital assets titled in, in the individual or joint, joint names of the parties that should be set apart and awarded to the parties. Uh, 13 attorney's fees and costs. Wife has retained the firm of Novi Law to represent her in this case and has agreed to pay them a reasonable fee for their services plus suit money and costs. Based on the relative financial circumstances, circumstances of the parties, husbands should be required to pay or contribute to the wife attorney's fees, suit money and costs, both temporary and final. Is that a normal thing for the wife to ask for the husband to pay for the fees? If there's a discrepancy in income, uh, a lot of this stuff that they're asking, just because you ask for it doesn't mean you're getting it. And often I, I usually tell my clients, even in criminal defense, like, I have a cat that's 17 years old. He's never gotten to lick the cheese off my pizza ever. But every time I make pizza, he he asks, thinking that maybe today's his lucky day. A lot of these asks are standard asks, even if it's something that they know they're not getting. So, so far, this is kind of like a boilerplate general uh, petition from what, what we're seeing here. Yeah. I mean, it, it, these are... I, I don't know how much money Dan was making, and I'm assuming Wendy did when she filed for this. So based on what's in front of me, it looks like it's it's pretty boilerplate. All right. So uh, 14, equitable relief. Wife is in need of and entitled to other, in, uh, other equitable relief. Uh, wherefore, wife demands the following. Dissolve the marriage of the parties. Establish a par parenting plan for the minor children, both temporary, temporarily uh, while this cause is pending and permanently granting wife the majority of time sharing and determine shared parental responsibility. Three, award wife temporary and permanent support for the party's minor children. Four, award wife temporary bridge the gap lump sum and durational alimony. Five, make a determination of the marital assets and liabilities. Six, order equal, equitable distribution of the marital assets and liabilities pursuant to the statute. Seven, determine and order distribution of non-marital assets pursuant to the statute. Eight, award uh, wife's attorney's fees and costs. And nine, award relief consistent with this petition and s such other and further relief as equitable and justified. Wendy Adelson, the petitioner slash wife. And then let's go to the dates. So the foregoing instrument was, instrument was sw sworn to and subscribed before me on this fifth day of September 2012 by Wendy Adelson. And what's significant about that, Katie? Well, so this is, uh, I can tell you that these documents are pre-electronic filing and the way that you know that is you can see the little stamp that's on these pages. So you see that sideways stamp that is you literally used to clock in pleadings, uh, even as late as 2012, where you put it into something that stamps it on there. Um, but when something is sworn to under oath, you put down the date that you swore to it under oath, and then it gets clocked in as a proceeding or gets clocked in. So uh, Wendy swore to it under oath on September 5th. Um, and I had just pulled up a calendar of September uh, 2012. September 5th is a Wednesday. Um, September 12th, which is uh, the day that I believe Dan said it was on the bed and she made the phone call and left the house is another Wednesday. The 10th that it was filed was a Monday. So it's sworn to on Wednesday the 5th. He leaves for this conference. And I, I don't remember the timing on that, but I'm sure somebody in the chat does. Then it's filed Monday the 10th. And then it's left on his bed on the 12th. And 
presumably he's he's been in town the fifth through whenever he leaves because it was a very short business trip, trip from what I understand. So she has sworn to this in an attorney's office. I think the dates will bear that out and was living in the house and not telling him and all those it, things. Plus the parenting class, as you pointed out previously, she completed it. The oh, yeah. July uh, well, I, I, I did that before we talked. So I'm going to show people that now. But uh, I'm going to show you the guys this this uh, this uh, certificate, which is interesting. But for folks who don't know, just a little background, Dan is away. He and he finds out that 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 he comes back, and there is the this this document is on his bed, and half of his all the kids stuff is gone. Half of the stuff in the house is gone. It, like it, it, he had no idea. He was just blindsided by this. And um, he's in New York, by the way, at a conference, and he's apparently ready to go on stage to present, and gets this phone call from Wendy saying, um, "I'm leaving you. Filed for divorce." And he's on the next flight. By the time he is back that evening, keeping in mind Tallahassee is not, a, he probably got on a, the first flight he could find because Tallahassee is not a direct flight to anywhere other than Atlanta and some places in South Florida. So he probably, for to, there's no direct flights to New York and I can guarantee you there weren't any in 2012 either. So for him, he would have to take two flights. So he probably heard about it mid-afternoon. He was walking back through the door of his house before midnight on the 12th. And the furniture's gone, the kids are gone, the clothes are gone. Uh, he says in his documents that uh, she didn't even leave any pants for the boys. She left none of the clothes that even fit them. She uh, and on the marital bed apparently were these divorce documents. So yeah, so and so we know uh, we just went over this. This is September 2012, right? That she does this. So let's go here. I research. We you know there's a lot in these documents. So but here is a certificate now a certificate of course completion this certifies uh that the person named below has completed the following four hour florida p parenting class program which okay you like you need to do that before you can go through a divorce is that is that is that i believe you need to do it uh before you are granted a divorce you can so, file without it to so, my knowledge so look at the date folks look at the date that she and it's for, for children under the age of 18 obviously if you've been married 10 seconds and you don't have any kids you don't need to do it but date of completion 7 27 2012 so in july of 2012 two months before her petition she went to this parenting class she had this planned at least before at least in july but obviously probably before that july 2012 she is going to fart floridaparentingclass.com because she knows that if she wants to get approved for this divorce she has to have this course and she did this uh in july of 2012 about two months before uh she uh files the uh divorce uh, petition and, and, and leaves it on the bed uh all right so i guess now we will go to uh, Dan's um, answer to the position, which I hope I have this right. It should be page five sixty. And Katie, we 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 will, I will go through it, but uh, there's a kind of like a sad part. But all right, so here, this is um, the answer to petition. This is Dan's answer to petition for the dissolution of marriage and a counter petition for the dissolution of marriage. Extra points for using Arial font. <laughs> Uh, comes now. I mean, I don't know if you guys. Hopefully, you can read this. Oh, that's too. All right. Comes now. The respondent husband Daniel Markell uh, and files the answer to the wife's petition for dissolution of marriage and counter petition for dissolution of marriage and states the allegation in paragraphs one through three of the petition are admitted. So he's admitting that's what was in there. Wasn't Wendy's filing was correct? The allegation contained in paragraph four of the petition is denied. Uh, furthermore, the husband affirmatively alleges that he is aggrieved that he is grieved that the wife has filed for dissolution of the party's marriage, though it is his hope, belief, and desire that the marriage may be saved. He understands due to the actions of the wife, this matter will proceed in court. Sad, right? Okay, like he wanted to he wanted to work through this. It's, it's incredibly sad. And I'll I'll also say for anybody else who's reading this, um, the same way in criminal things, in criminal uh, proceedings, you'll see the name not used and just defendant, husband, 
or former husband, wife, and former wife, those are all used in family law proceedings kind of as shorthand sometimes to help the judge out. Uh, all right, so page two, the allegations contained in paragraphs five and six of the petition are admitted. Uh, seven, the allegations contained in paragraph seven of the petition are denied, and the husband affirmatively, affirmatively alleges that this court should fashion and establish a parenting plan which is in the best interest of the children pursuant to Florida statutes and all applicable case law granting uh, to the husband at least equal time sharing with the minor children. And I'll stop you there. The answer to every question having to do with children on the Florida bar exam is the best interest of the children. So 50-50 time sharing is generally in best interest of the children unless there's something else going on. And that's why Wendy goes into, oh, he's away so much. Oh, he's, you know, he's he's in he's at New York University all the time. And, and that's why they should be granted to me. And he could have made a very similar allegation back that she's always down in Miami. Right. Uh, okay, so she wants equal time sharing. Let's go to eight. The husband is without knowledge as to the allegations contained in paragraph paragraph eight of the petition and affirmatively alleges that child support child support should be established pursuant to uh, uh, Florida child support guidelines. Uh, he denies the allegations in paragraph nine. Uh, ten. The allegations contained in paragraph ten of the petition are admitted in part and denied in part. It is agreed this court needs to classify, determine, and value the party's real and personal property. Further, the husband affirmatively alleges that he should be granted uh, an unequal distribution based upon his extraordinary and superior contributions to the contributions, uh, superior contributions to the acquisition and retention of these assets. Uh, 11 through 12, the allegations are admitted. 13, the allegations in uh, 13 are denied. 14, the husband is without knowledge as the allegations contained in paragraph 14. And here we go to the counter petition. Uh, come now, the respondent, Daniel Markell, uh, files his counterpetition for dissolution of marriage and shows the court the following. Action for dissolution. This is an action for the dissolution of marriage between the husband, Daniel Markell, and the wife, Wendy Adelson. The husband has been a resident of the state of Florida for more than six months, uh, preceding the filing of his counterpetition. Marriage. The husband and wife were married on February 26, 2006 in Boca Raton, Palm Beach County, Florida, and lived together as husband and wife until early September of 2012, at which time they separated, irretrievably broken. The husband is grieved that the wife has filed for the dissolution of the party's marriage, and it is his hope, belief, and desire the marriage may be saved. How he, however, he understands that the, re the reality that his wife is intent on a divorce, and therefore this matter will proceed in the court. Again, he's uh. He kind of wants to, he, he doesn't want this here, he, he, but he understands that Wendy does, it seems like. Uh, venue is Leon County, as is the county in which the parties last reside as the husband and wife with the intent uh, to remain married. Neither, neither party is in the armed forces. The ch they have two children. I've redacted their information. Um, child support. The parties bar children are oh, in need of. Can you scroll back up? Yep. That didn't even occur to me. What's that? The younger son wasn't even two yet. 23 months. Mm. 23 months. Yep. Three and 23 months old uh, is how old they were. Very young. Am, uh, am I alone thinking that you, you don't have children that are that young without have been having problems at the time that you tried to conceive them? No, you're probably not. That's not my legal opinion, but like when they're that young. Yeah, good point. Um, child support. The party's minor children are in need of and entitled to both temporary and permanent support from the husband and the wife pursuant to the child support guidelines of the state of Florida. In addition to monthly child support, the wife should be required to, to pay her pro rata share of medical and dental insurance coverage for the children and her pro rata share of all the non-insured medical and dental expenses incurred for the children. Further, the wife should be required to maintain life insurance on her life in an amount sufficient to meet her child support obligations in the event of the wife's uh, death. Nine, presenting parenting agreement. Since the wife lived the marital home in the early of September 2012, the children have, equ uh, have resided equally with the husband and the wife. Uh, shared parental responsibility, parenting plan, time sharing. The minor children of the party should be placed in... Uh, Shared parental responsibility, and this court should fashion and establish 
a parenting plan slash time sharing arrangement, which is in the best interest of minor children pursuant to the Florida statutes and all applicable case law granting to the husband at least equal time sharing with the minor children. Uh, property, assets, debts. During the course of the marriage, these parties have acquired certain real and personal property, both tangible and intangible, as well as other assets and debts, uh, which require the court's determination as to the marital status, valuation, and division. Moreover, the husband has made extraordinary contributions to the acquisition and retention of all property assets and should be entitled to a greater than 50% division of said assets. Again, that's my cat and the cheese. Like, you're asking for it, but generally speaking, it gets split down the middle. It's going to be 50 feet. Okay. The husband yeah. has also non-marital and premarital property, which is not subject to the equitable distribution, which should be set aside and awarded to him. So anything he's saying, basically anything I had before this is still mine. Like that's not, that's not yours, right? That's what he's saying there. Mm-hmm. Um, equitable relief. The husband is in need of entitled to any other for, uh, further equitable relief, which this court may deem appropriate. Wherefore, the husband prays as follows. A, the marriage between the parties be dissolved. B, that parties, my children, be placed in shared parental responsibility and this court fashion and establish a parenting slash time sharing arrangement, which is in the best interest of the minor children, pursuant to the Florida statutes and all applicable case law, granting to the husband at least equal time sharing. C, both parties be required to provide temporary and permanent support to their minor children pursuant to the child support guidelines of the state of Florida. D, the wife be required to pay her pro rata share of medical and dental insurance coverage for the minor children and her pro rata share of all non-insured medical and uh, dental uh, expenses incurred for the children. E, the wife be required to maintain life insurance and uh, an amount sufficient to meet her child support. Uh, F, this court determine the marital status and value of parties' real and personal property both tangible and intangible, including pension and or retirement can- accounts, as well as other assets, debts, and divide same granting to the husband a greater than 50% portion of the assets to his extraordinary and superior contributions to the acquisition and retention of same. Also, that the court set aside and award the husband his non-marital and, and or premarital property. G, the husband be awarded further relief as court deems appropriate. Uh... And that is Dan's response. Um, and if we want, we can go to their financial affidavits. So five, three, oh, good. You have the numbers. I do. I do. I, <laughs> I went through this. Folks, this is uh, 566 pages. So um, here is the this here's Wendy's. Uh, um, financial family law financial ad- affidavit. She's 33. She's a lawyer professor at Florida State University College of Law. She makes $85,000 at the time annually. Now, Dan said that she misstated that by several thousand dollars. I think she was making over a hundred at the time that uh, she left Tallahassee. And that so that last year's gross income was two the last year's gross income of 2011, uh, seven thousand monthly gross income seven thousand eighty three dollars. Uh, then we got income taxes. I don't know how much of this we want to go over. Um, two thousand monthly mortgage. This is like this is just all like their bills. So to- in total, their expenses four thousand six hundred thirty-two dollars. Actually, she's saying that if you scroll up a little bit, monthly mortgage or rent payments. Yeah, I am assuming that's what she's saying. She's paying currently. Okay. As opposed to two thousand a month for the marital home. Uh, if this is a dissolution of marriage case and your expenses. Is- do not reflect what you actually pay currently. You should write estimate. Um, yeah. Okay. So that I, I'm assuming that what she's saying is she's running this home for two thousand dollars. Okay. Month, gotcha. Which which seems a little bit so a three three in my neighborhood was actually a, I I made note of this which is in a similar neighborhood that she was renting in was just listed for twenty five hundred a month and that surprised me. Um, but this is ten years ago and 
things have been uh, increasing astronomically, especially in this area. So I don't, I feel like 2000 a month is, is kind of high. Interesting. Okay. Uh, we got some automobile expenses, some children expenses. And they were both in preschool. So that's legit. Uh, dry cleaning, clothing, monthly clothing, $400. Um, $100 for psychiatric counselor. Fifth, ninety-five for monthly grooming, one hundred twenty-five for monthly gifts. Hmm. Hundred dollars monthly club dues. Is this just her? Yeah, this is just her. The children. Already. I I believe so. I don't um because I think all the children stuff was uh up here. So the four hundred dollars for clothes is just for her. Yeah, because this is the monthly expenses for children. So Ooh. yeah. I mean, I could see you spend it like growing boys and. Right. I don't know about four hundred dollars a month, but I could see you like needing to purchase larger clothing quite often. So her other monthly expenses all combined, we got uh, monthly club dues, monthly sports and hobbies, monthly entertainment two hundred dollars, monthly periodicals eight thirty, monthly vacations come to two thousand one hundred. She's saying two thousand one hundred seventy eight dollars. Eight hundred and thirty for monthly vacations. Monthly vacations eight hundred and thirty dollars. Where is uh -huh. she going? Oh, she um, oh, good, good call by uh, Lori, who's in the chat. Two hundred dollars yep. she put for monthly clothing and uh, uniforms for the kids. Is what she put here. Two hundred dollars. Uh, so she's buying four hundred dollars worth of clothes a month. Uh, six hundred, right? Four hundred for her. Two hundred for the. Well, okay, yeah, good point. <laughs> I mean, uh, like personally, four hundred dollars. Uh, eighty dollars monthly gifts to the children. So, uh, all right. So those are her expenses. Um, so her monthly expenses are nine. Th what she is? Yeah, it's even not. She's operating at a deficit. So she's saying she's operating at a deficit deficit of about thirty eight hundred dollars. Um, and remember, folks, this kind of I know it's kind of like like I don't. Uh, this comes into play. Late, like there, there's some allegations that that she's not putting all the information in here, and she, of course, alleges it. I think in all the trials, and even in the police interview, that Dan uh, owes her money. So, like this, this is this is part of it. This is part of it. Um, she says she has a checking account of ten thousand uh, dollars. Husband's there. Schwab is unknown. Oh, so she puts. Isn't that the account that she took like half out of? Could be. It could be. I remember the cost grilling her about that, and that was it was a significant amount of money that uh, that he took. I remember she was like hundreds of thousands of dollars. There's the real estate. What they value the house at? Trescott, um, two hundred seventy five market value. Um, and a house like that today, and I only know this because I'm looking for real. Like obviously, I live in a teeny tiny house with too many living things but um the a house that size today would probably be going for like i don't know five or six hundred thousand now and that's why i i feel like her two thousand dollar rent seems really high for 10 right. years ago interesting all right so now we go to retire this is their retirement accounts uh she's got like like seven seventy six hundred dollars in a Roth. She's got four thousand in IRA. She says husband has about a hundred thousand in a uh, T. Rowe Price State of Florida. I don't know. What oh, that's that... deferred compensation. Okay, that's uh, what that is. Then four hundred one k seventy four thousand. Um, and then oh, here's a big one: investment stocks partnerships. Just as Charles Schwab, seven hundred fifteen thousand uh, dollars. And that's what we have. So subtotal of investment stocks almost eight hundred grand. And there we got the uh, the hot Dan had a Honda Accord. She of course has the infamous Honda Odyssey that she drove by the crime scene with. Um, but all these are listed at zero. Yeah, these are all listed as. I, I think Dan says in first in in, yeah. a, in a filing, he's like, these are all at zero. Why are they all at zero? We'll, right. We'll, we will get to that. <laughs> Even the piece of shit car I turned in for my current one, like they were like, we're going to, you're selling it for parts. This is terrible. 
Um, I got 400 bucks for it. And so these are like relatively, you know, well taken care of vehicles. So it's 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 pretty and interesting. Boat is worth zero. Yeah, and this is what Dan was pissed at. This is Dan was bothered by this. So he put all this as zero dollars, folks. All of this zero for well, both of them. Zero. I divide. I well, she put with the furniture and furnishings. Don't worry, I already divided that myself. Yeah, I already took that shit when I left without <laughs> him even knowing. Um, I decided what was half and took it. Yeah, don't forget jewelry. The jewelry that she kept. Um, Excuse me. All right, so, all right, so let's see the totals here. Uh, what is? I don't even know. Oh, uh, assets: one point two million, one million two hundred seventy-five thousand. Uh, well, actually, no, is that right? What are these totals? Uh, oh, summary of matter assets and liability schedule. So, I guess these are the ass. Oh, these are all adding up. This is 1.2. This is cash. So she has 10 10,000 cash. So this is adding up all her assets. Um just these these top things I don't think match here, do they? Hmm. All right, well that's that's uh that's Wendy's uh let's see if there's anything else to this. And uh the Florida child support guidelines there's just a, it's a chart like for the first child for this for any additional child there's that you it's just like add a, on yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. It, it's easy. And then we like can, there's I, presumptive right. Um, I think I have Dan's here is 545. So let's see. All right, so this is Dan, a uh, law professor. Um pay rate 165,000 a year. Ooh, she must have been pissed about that. <laughs> um so monthly, he's making about fifteen thousand. Um, see, it's interesting. He did it in like a different format here. Uh, Prince, this is his monthly in income. Interest and in dividends. So total monthly gross income sixteen grand. His deductions uh, eleven thousand six hundred sixty nine dollars. Um. These are all his expenses, it looks like. Yeah, average monthly expenses, 3628 They must have put it quite a bit down. They must have put at least 20% down on the house. I was just noting the mortgage payment. It was quite low. Interesting. Okay. Uh, transportation, $656. Expenses for the children, um, almost $3,000. Insurance, $373. Other expenses, um, $4,799. Um, all right, so there's, oh, oh, geez, look at that. There's Premier Fitness, and that comes into play, right? That's, uh, so that's his club dues. Yep, from the infamous Premier Fitness, who I yeah. think has not raised rates in the past 10 years. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so total expenses, $12,411. Um, so he is also claiming a loss, um, about seven hundred forty-two dollars. Did he uh, list the children's? Um... Here's children expenses right here. Okay, so they've listed. I I think they've both listed the 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 big expenses, the daycare, right, or or preschool. Uh, let's see. Yeah, school there? tuition. Yep. yep. Two third paid by husband, one third paid by wife. Yeah. So they both listed that. Yep. All right. Um, there, that's the here's the uh, the worksheet you're talking about. He just he I guess he attached it. Um, this is his. Oh, this is his financial affidavit. His Schwab account three hundred seventy thousand. Two Schwab accounts, both with about three hundred seventy thousand. Um. There's the marital home. There's the car. See, he lists the cars both as fifteen thousand. Interesting. Sounds reasonable. Yeah. I mean, seven year old or well, at the time, five year old minivan and four year old Honda. Right. Uh, jewelry. He has. See, he obviously he's investing in a lot of uh, accounts. He has. Um. 
Anyway, so I think that's just an affidavit confirming what uh, what they had. Um, all right. So what is this? Let's see. Is this should we go to this next or something else? Father's motion for enforcement of parental agreement and for electronic access to the minor children. Um, Maybe he wants Skype. I think. Yeah. Let's see. In the days uh, before Zoom. Uh, comes now. Comes now. The respondent Daniel Markell through his attorney. Uh, files this motion for enforcement of parental agreement and for electronic access to the children. The parties to this pending dissolution of marriage to have two children. Um, again, three and two. Um, the parents are both law professors at uh, Florida State University College of Law. The parties separated in September of 2012. While the husband was away on a short... This is where he starts breaking stuff down. Yeah. While the husband was away on a short business trip, the wife let the husband in the marital home on or about September 10, 2012, taking with her the children, their furniture, clothing, and toys, and whatever assets and furniture, both marital and non-marital, she desired. All right, this is where we're starting to see Dan. He is pissed, obviously. Um the husband is a devoted husband and father and was given no advance notice of the wife's departure with the children. Furthermore, for the first six weeks following the separation, the wife refused to share any correct information with the husband regarding her whereabouts with the children. I mean, how shitty is that? Okay, I'm going to read that again. Furthermore, for the first six weeks following the separation, the wife refused to share any correct information with the husband regarding her whereabouts with the the children and let me speak to that because there there are certain and i think dan references this at some point in his pleadings too there, there are certain situations where maybe that might be appropriate like you know if he's threatened to murder you and your kids and burn down the house and you have an injunction and you're trying to rent an apartment to, so that he can't find you based on all these uh things that he said or that you've alleged he said maybe that's appropriate but that's never been alleged that there's any kind of danger right and and that even comes up in the police interview like she had they had like was he ever abusive or anything she comes she never says anything like that she was she, I think she said, emotionally. emotionally yeah she's like emotionally but not physically anything like that um right. so all right so since the separation since the separation the parties have exercised equal time sharing with their minor children uh in October of 2012, after verbal and email communications, the party reached the following agreement. Communication. Any stay of three nights or more with parent A triggers an option for parent B to Skype with the children for 10 minutes on the second night, fourth night, sixth night, etc. Parent A will facil facilitate the option, making the children available for Skype or FaceTime with parent B at 8.30 a.m. or at 6 p.m. at the parent B's choice. The 8.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. times are an option for the parent without the children, uh, but other times that are mutually agreed upon can be arranged as well. The same principles apply when it is parent A who is not with the children. The it above, sounds reasonable. It sounds very reasonable. And again, these are young kids. Like Dan wants to just, he's not with them. He wants to Skype. He wants to FaceTime. He just wants to see them. Um, yeah, they're not on the phone. They're not texting. They're not typing. Right. Like, I want to see their faces. I want to know they're okay. I want eyes on. Right. Completely reasonable to me. Uh, right. I think any anyone. Uh, the above agreement has been append has been appended to numerous time sharing agreements between the parents since October 2012. Because of the time sharing schedule, the parents maintain two two three with adjustments for holidays and work related travel. So two days one, two days the other, two day you know three. Like they switch like that. Uh, and because the parents see the children during the week at the boys' preschool, the communication agreement only requires the wife to facilitate about two to three Skype conversations on average per month, each of about 10 minutes duration, totaling approximately 30 minutes of time. Not that much doesn't seem like to, to uh, facilitate. The, this, the existence of this agreement was acknowledged by the wife in an email she wrote on February 26, 2013, in which she acknowledged that there is an agreement in place that refers to 8.30 a.m. or 6 p.m. for every other day on Skype. This admission of an agreement's existence is important because in March of 2013, A, the wife announced she is no longer going to facilitate Skype calls 
on the on the grounds that three conversations in an average month were disruptive and not in the best interest of the boys. That doesn't seem right. Uh, B, in March 2013, letter to the husband's attorney, counsel for the wife, denied there was any agreement and stated the matter could be resolved at mediation. The wife's claim is false. The parties clearly have an agreement that was entered into the fall of 2012, which the wife largely, though not completely, adhered to until mid-January of 2013, which the wife acknowledged existed on February 26, 2013. Eight. Uh, in short, the wife is engaged in a, in a pattern of interfering with the husband's access to their children. The husband continues to offer the wife daily access to the children via Skype or telephone as long as reasonable notice is provided. The party's children are doing well, and there has never been an allegation that they are upset by or unhappy with the Skype conversations. Uh, pursuant to Florida Statute 61-13003, the father's desire for electronic access to the children is clearly in the children's best interests and was deemed as such by a local family therapist and is indisputable that the communication equipment te and technology to provide uh, electronic communication is reasonable, reasonably available, accessible, and affordable to both parties. Wherefore, the respondent husband respectfully re requests this court enter an order as follows. Enforcing the agreement in place between the parties Awarding to the respondent husband his attorney's fees and costs related to this motion. Granting to the respondent husband such an increase in time sharing sole decision making authority as this court may deem appropriate until such time as the wife is able to demonstrate a capacity and disposition to communicate uh, and cooperate effectively and fairly. And D, granting to the respondent husband such other and further relief as this court may deem appropriate. So what do you think about that, Katie? It seems inherently reasonable, the stuff that he's asking for, doesn't it? Um, I, look, I, you know, there, there's this thought that they beat reasonableness out of us in law school. So I'll, I'll ask the chat, do we, do we think that's reasonable? I think it's reasonable. Um, and it makes me, there were some things about Wendy that came out in evidence that I, I don't know um, if anybody else picked up on. Uh, that she was kind of a mess. She was late for stuff. She wasn't really on time. She was disorganized. And I wonder if that was part of it, that she really wasn't planning around giving him time with the kids. And so that's why it was disruptive because she didn't plan her schedule around it the way that anybody else that's a normal human being would. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it looks like folks are in the chat are saying, yes, it, did, it does seem reasonable. And I agree. Um just see. I've never been divorced, so I don't know. But, uh, well, I, I, unless I, I, the folks in the chat have, and you have. So. I have, and you know that's that when you're in a, it's a it's a source of contention. But it's like, and I, I was kind of in the same situation where I did not have the kids, as right. and and in New York for me it wasn't uh, fifty fifty. The the it, for me it was I had Wednesday night overnight into Thursday and every other weekend, so like. That's how it was like that was like the best thing, and that was like it's like what twenty percent maybe. It's not a lot, and that's basically what they do. Like that's the deal. Like that's the standard thing. Um, I mean, it's changed now because we some other stuff has happened, but nonetheless, yeah. when I not when you when your kids are so because my kids were young too. They were very they were about to say, and you know, my kids are just like this. Is another thing I forget all the time when I say all the things that are like trigger me. But my kids are like the same age. They're, like they're the like same three age. and two. Yeah, they were young. They're they're well, they're two years apart, but yeah, they, so four and two like they, they were young they were young and it's like you want to have that you know uh time where you could talk to them if you're not with them all the time it's 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 tough enough because you know for the first two and three years for you were with them every day you were with them every day you saw them every day and now it's like and also that now it's also like for me it was like when you do get to see them like if you're going to the school or going to somewhere where the person your ex is it's like oh it's like a such a tough situation because you know they're going to be there you're going to deal with that if their family's going to be there and god imagine you got to deal with the adelsons at like public places i mean we're going to talk about later that comes up dan brings up like a time where they were like playing uh, there was like a soccer date and like they were so you know well, it, so much of your contact with your children when you're that age is physical like i mean you're not really point. having deep conversations with them they're sitting on your lap and you're hugging them and they're going like this if you're on because i have like i facetime my husband's out of town with the baby 
and she'll go like this and reach for the camera because she wants to be held. It like two and three years old. That's absolutely. Yeah, that's lap time. Great, great point. So that was. Let me see what other motion I can pull up here. Um, so this is October two thousand twelve. Um, Wendy wife's motion for temporary relief. This is stamped October 4th, 2012 comes now. Wendy Adelson. Um, she filed. For, so this is about a month after the initial filing. She filed for her petition of dissolution. September 2nd. There are two minor children born of the marriage during the pendency of this action. The parties have attempted to negotiate a parenting arrangement for the children. The parties were able to agree upon a time-sharing schedule for the month of September, but are currently unable to agree on any further parenting plan. Wife has proposed various parenting plans to husband, which he has either not responded or rejected. The wife proposes a parenting plan through December in the best interest of the children, which accommodates both parents' work schedules, each parent's travel plans, as well as the husband's desire to have the children on major religious holidays. This parenting plan provides the mother with 50 per, 51% of the time sharing and the father with 49%. It is in the best interest of these children for the court to enter this proposed parenting plan, which is attached to as Exhibit A. The children are presently in need of temporary support from the husband. The wife has incurred reasonable uh, attorney's fees and costs in representation of this matter in bringing this motion for temporary relief. Wherefore, wife respectfully requests this honorable court to enter wife's proposed parenting plan and establish temporary child support consistent with the child support guidelines. And this is kind of the proposed. So as you can see here, she wants, I think this you is don't the, have it up on the screen. Oh, I'm such an idiot. No, you. you're not. Yes. I am. Oh, sorry, thank you. sorry guys. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. I didn't pull it. All right. So, uh, so here's the two, two, three, I think. So like, as you can see, well, maybe you can't cause it's, it's smaller font, but, uh, you know, dad, dad, two, two, mom, mom, you know, two, two, three. So that's kind of what mm -hmm. that's kind of what they were. That's what that's what she was looking for as she uh, presented this. Um, So that is that. Uh, let's see what else I can pull up here. Uh, Guys, unfortunately, this is not in like number order. So I'm just I I kind of broke it down trying to put it in um let's see what this is this is and i just saw the uh the mediation stuff and i will put it out there that i i don't believe we're going to see any testimony from the mediator even though that would be amazing because no i look i didn't see anything in the, yeah I'll, I'll look again to see if there's anything but i think this is later on so i might hold off on this what is this one this is um this is the this is where it starts getting juicy. Yeah, let's see what date this is though. I'm not sure. This is so this is 2014. I don't know if we want to get into that already. I don't know. What do you guys think? Um do we wanna keep going with this? This is a this this is a pretty long filing. This maybe we'll this is what we'll cut we'll we'll uh well let me ask you, Kate, was there anything you wanted to like any that I didn't go over like that you wanted to go through, like any of the documents I should bring up? Um, um, nothing off the top of my head. This one looks like it's really the meat and potatoes. Yeah, maybe we'll save this for our next one. Cause we're, um, is, yep. Yeah, so maybe for now. Let Motion me just, for contempt and sanctions. Let me see. I'm going to put the chat on the screen. Um, let us know if you have any questions about what we've gone through so far. Um, and Kay can take a look and see if she can answer. They'll come up on here. Um, and let me just see if there's anything else I could pull up here. Guys, there are a couple of depositions we're going to go through. Um, there's one of the uh, owner of the uh, preschool that they went through. There's one of a, of a, a FSU law professor. So those should be interesting when we go to them. Um, let me see. What else? If you guys have any questions, let, let us know. We have we... one request for chronological in the uh, chat. Yeah, I'm try it's it's hard because it, there's like <laughs> there... I, I told Jay this before we went online. I gave him all the documents that were scanned in as one thing and uh it's you can tell that these were filed by hand that they were clocked in. 
Nowadays, you can file them each separately, but I get the feeling this this all got scanned in later and is not chronological. Uh, let's see. I mean, I could get, I, I, I don't think, I wonder how many motions, I have the actual agreement, like if we want to do that for the final thing, if, you know, where they, the final agreed um, marital settlement um, before we get into when they start getting, but I'm trying to think how many, um, if there were a ton of motions before that, that I don't know the answer of. So I got, let me just see. I'm laughing um, at the kids are chattel. What's chattel? Uh, chattel is uh, objects that are your possessions, essentially. Oh, okay. um, and it, it, it can also include like livestock or pets or computers or, you know. Yeah. So I'm looking at what I have what I have bookmarked, I have Wendy's motions to enforce the settlement agreement. So obviously that's after Wendy's mo uh, motion for the to dismiss husband's motion to enforce the settlement, husband's counter motion for enforcement, wife's answer to counter petition for dissolution. No, we already did that. Um, we had we did Wendy's petition for dissolution, husband's answer we did, wife's motion for temporary relief we did. Uh, husband's memorandum, memorandum of law in support of his answer. Do we do that to his wife's amended petition for dissolution of marriage? Let me see. And by the way, thank you all so much for being here. Please, I always forget to this. Please follow Katie on Twitter. It's in the description. What is it? At Katie ESQ. Is that your uh, handle? Yeah, it's just Katie Esquire spelled out. Uh, I uh, managed to cap that down in 2012. All right, I think we could this might be um, a good one to show here. So let me pull this up. So this is. Oh, so actually, maybe I should. I got to find. This is his motion to Response dismiss. To the petition I got to find to her petition to relocate. I don't know if I have that. I, I think that one was even relatively short. Would it be in I mean. the, her petition for, mm -hmm. would for it be in his response? Let's see. No, uh, maybe it's, it's I'm sure his response is. Hopefully it's right above her petition. That would be great. No, see, we did that. Her petition for relocation would have been in early 2000, sometime in 2013 in like the spring. Sorry, guys. I should have done. I should have planned this better. Um, we did this already. The thing is, on this, the way I'm, I'm presenting this, I can't search by, um, like words. Uh, but let me see. This is her petition. This is her. This is the husband's per notice produced the wife for a deposition. Um, let's see what else we got here. Well, this might be it. What is this? Oh, here we go. All right, folks. Sorry, it took me a little while. This is, uh, we're not going to be able to, we, we're doing an hour, and it's right at the end. Maybe you should just, maybe I'll start this. Oh, no, this is husband's answer. What the heck? Why did I just see? He may have attached it as an exhibit. If he keeps scrolling. Sometimes I would do that just to put both the things in front of the judge. Oh, maybe I just read it wrong. Maybe his, let me just check if his is right. Let me just check above his if it's hers. So this is husband's answer to wife's petition. All right, well, here's here, we could do this. I think that we'll end it here. So this is filed January 14, 2013. 
motion for temporary relocation of minor children pending final hearing on relocation. Come now, the petitioner wife, Wendy Adelson, moves this court pursuant to Florida Statute 61-13001 for an expedited hearing allowing her to temporarily, here we go, allowing her to temporarily relocate to Carl Springs, Florida, pending final hearing on her re relocation request and would state, one, the wife filed her petition for dissolution of marriage on September 10th, 2012. Two, the husband has filed his answer and counter petition uh, on October 4th, 2012. The wife filed her response to that pleading on December 5th, 2012. On January 14th, 2013, the wife has filed her motion to leave to amend her petition to add a relocation request together with her proposed petition for relocation. Um, the wife requests that this court grant her. Oh, this is small. You guys probably can't read this, but I don't even know if you want to. Uh, the wife requests that this court grant her an expedited hearing pursuant to Florida Statute 61-13001, pursuant to the statute an evidentiary hearing of or non-jury trial on a uh, pleading seeking temporary or permanent relief filed under the section shall be accorded priority on the court's calendar. If a motion seeking temporary relocation is filed absent good cause, the hearing must occur no later than 30 days after the motion for a temporary relocation is filed. If a notice to set the matter for a non-jury trial is filed, absent good cause, the non-jury trial must occur no later than 90 days after the notice is filed. The wife requests that she be allowed a temporary relocation with the minor children to Carl Springs because she has been offered a job in Carl Springs with substantially greater income beginning May 1st, 2013. The wife must inform the employers of her ability to relocate and accept this position on a very short notice. Interesting. The wife. And I, I think the offer was from friends of the family. Oh, that's even more interesting. Yeah, somebody who they had known for a very long time. The wife requests that this court consider her motion and her petition and grant after hearing so this court can allow her to relocate with the Meyer children and meet this deadline. Wherefore, the wife respectfully requests, requests this court hold an expediting hearing on her motion to temporarily relocate, allow the wife to temporarily relocate to Carl Springs with the Meyer children, and accept her new job while the case is pending. And that is January 14, 2013. Um, so it sounds like... The, it, what is this? Is this the same thing? Oh, that's she would have filed that before she filed uh what I just read or yeah. Or? To leave to a mention because at, at one point I, I think she was asked uh why she had not included it with her initial pleadings, the, the request to relocate. And she essentially said, uh, my lawyer refused, <laughs> like said that it was not happening and I shouldn't do it. And I'm right. obviously paraphrasing. All right. So uh, let me just, I'm just going to scroll up a little bit to see if I can find that initial, but if not, we'll just, we'll just end it here and we'll, we'll come back with Dan's uh, response, which as you could see, when we were just kind of scrolling, it is. He he uh, he obviously did not agree, and he and he, and he lets her have it. So um, I think Dan's response in uh, shorthand is GFY. <laughs> yes, uh, and for folks who don't know what GFY is, it's go fuck yourself. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, all right, so I, I I apologize. I'll do better of trying to get this in. Um, and again, there might be parts that are just not in here because they might be sealed. Um, but when we come back, when we do it, our next one, uh, I don't know if we'll do it next Saturday, whenever, um, Katie has availability, but when we do that, um, try to have it in more of a, uh, chronological order. I mean, so far what we went over, uh, Katie, what are your thoughts about just is kind of so far normal boilerplate stuff or. Yeah. I mean, it, it's asking to go, it, I, I get why her first lawyer was like, we're not filing that with the, the petition for relocation, because it's, you're not going to get it. Like right. he's not abusing you. He's not abusing the kids. There's absolutely nothing. There, there's not a really good reason to take the kids away from their dad. You can right. move to Miami, but you leave the kids here. Right. And uh, I mean, for what reason could she not have gone down for all the reasons she lists? Oh, Dan could go back and forth. Dan could fly down with his schedule 
he could fly down to see the boys, then fly back up to FSU. Why couldn't she have done that? Right. It's because she wanted what she wanted. Exactly. That's my assumption. Yeah. And we know what she did when she didn't get what she wanted. So, um, yeah. And then once we start getting into the motions that are like after they already go, we'll, at, we'll, we'll go through also the um, the final like agreement that they have, which I think is about like seven pages. But that it gets really like heated after, as we have seen in the trials. But that's when it really starts getting heated. But they don't read all the words and uh, like <laughs> Dan. Uh, Dan lets her have it and lets them have it, and it's it's really interesting to go through. So, um, here's a motion to reduce former wife's motion to reduce time for former wife to respond to a notice. I mean, there's there's a lot here. So I oh, would. It's petty. Yeah, <laughs> like that one. <laughs> Uh, I'll try. I apologize, guys. For the next one, I'll definitely get it in better chronological order. But I hope, I hope for um, you know, folks who came, there was some stuff we went in that maybe you hadn't seen before. Uh, I really thank Katie for getting me this document and then for doing this with me. Um, did you see any any questions that um folks had um that you, that you saw or let's see? I kind of want to say something that you know, to move them down to Miami, someplace where they've never lived before when they're in preschool in a place that they're used to with teachers they're used to in the middle of a divorce at at that age, like that's not in the best interests of the children, even if the father was agreeing to it. Right. In my opinion. And a lot of this is opinion. A lot of family law is opinion. The judge would make their, but I, I think it's appropriate to say that when the judge read this petition that Wendy filed and basically pulled the parties aside and was like, you guys can put on whatever evidence you want to put on, but nobody's relocating with the kids. And you've this dealt is, with this it judge, right? It doesn't meet the standard. You've, you've had cases with this judge? Yes. And she's, she's done that before where she'll like pull you aside and like, and see like, look, you guys can put on whatever evidence you want to put on, but. You know, unless you unless there's something that's groundbreaking here, you, you're going to lose. Uh, and essentially, they backed off like halfway through the first witness or something like that. Right. And again, folks, we're going to go we're going to go through some depositions, transcripts that are in here. Uh, we're going to go through the final uh, settlement. Uh, oh, we just got twenty dollar super chat. Uh, twenty dollars in purple smurf. Thanks. Great. Jake. Great guest. Great host. Thank you so much. Um. So yeah, please guys follow Katie on Twitter. I'm gonna convince Katie. I'm not, she has a TikTok that I'm gonna convince her to start using it again. You stop using it. You were you almost had like a million views on your your Murdoch, one of your Murdoch videos. On my southern nicknames for the Murdoch case video. No, the uh, there was a different one you had that had almost like oh. a, a <laughs> million views. I was like, holy crap, you gotta start doing that again. Um, but anyway. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Katie. First of all, for getting me the document. Secondly, for agreeing to do this with me. What's your is your is your uh, TikTok the same thing, Katie? Yes, uh, I think so. Actually, I I was really using it during COVID, like when we were all at home and losing our minds. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Everybody needed that. Uh, and I do want to say tomorrow, folks, at three o'clock, part two of uh, analyzing Wendy Adelson's police and drew not only do i have jack uh never a truer word who uh you know analyzes kind of the things she said i also have former fbi profiler julia julia cowley from the consult pod and she already messaged me because i said in the beginning we're gonna kind of go over what jack talked about and then we're gonna start with new stuff and she already messaged me and was like i got some stuff too just based on what we had already reviewed and jack has already run out of ink in his printer for all the stuff that he printed out and went over so uh, I think it's going to be a good one. And then, Katie, we're, we're going to schedule this. This is part one. We're going to, we're going to um, do it again maybe next week. Whenever, you know, like I said, Katie is a busy woman, so I really appreciate her taking the time to do it. I'll, I'll tell you, I loved the Never a Truer Word one. I think I've listened to it three times in my car because every time you listen to it, you, you pick up something else with the, oh, my God, oh, my God, these are her markers. Yeah, that was a big one for it's me. It's wild. I, it's I, like I listen to things differently even after just that first thing. Right. Yeah. And I, I want to make a video where like I put that in it and then I put all the time. She says, oh, my God. And like says something weird like right. I, that, that really um, hit me. So, um, guys, thank you so much for everyone. Thank you so much for being here. 
Thank you, mods. Thank you, Katie. Please follow Katie on Twitter, and maybe I'll convince her to get on uh, to TikTok. Um, thanks, everybody, and I'll catch you tomorrow, same time, 3 Eastern. Uh, thank you all so much, and take care.